Okay. All right. Good morning. Um, I'm pleased to be joined virtually from Rome by Mr. Bubakar Ben Belhassan, the director of the Food and Agriculture Organization, um, its Trade and Markets Division. He will be briefing us on the FAO Food Price Index, which, as you know, is a measure of the monthly change in international prices of a basket of food commodities. And as you are all well aware, last month the Food Price Index had already reached an all-time high. So I turn it over to our guest. Thank you. Do you hear me? Yes, we hear you. We do not see you, but we hear you. I have my camera on. I don't know. I hope they can uh, project that. Ah, now we see you. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, as, as you said, uh, let me start by saying good, good morning, good afternoon. And we are happy to be joining you from, from Rome for this briefing today. Uh, my intervention will be on the latest development in food markets and food commodity prices, and particularly the last move in the new FAO Food Price Index, which uh, was released today, this morning, wrong time. Uh, my name is Bubakar Ben Belhassan. As you already uh, mentioned, I'm the director of the Marks and Trade Division in FAO in Rome. And I'm also joined by my colleague, Erin Collier, who is an economist and grain specialist in, in the same division. The FAO Food Price Index covers five commodity groups, and these are cereals, vegetable oils, meat, dairy, products, and, and sugar. In March, the food, the food Price Index registered a 12.6% increase from February, reaching an all-time high this series goes back to 1990. All sub-indices for the different commodity groups registered significant increases with the sub-indices for vegetable oils, cereals, and meat also reaching new all-time highs. The sugar and dairy prices uh, sub-indices also rose significantly. Now talking about the cereal prices, the sub-index increased by 17.1% in March compared to the, its value in February. International prices of cereals were large, largely driven by conflict-related export disruption in Ukraine and the Russian Federation. Concerns over crop condition, in particularly the U.S., also added support, which drove wheat prices up sharply in March, increasing by 19.7%. Significant reduced maize export expectation for Ukraine on top of elevated energy and input costs underpinned a 19.1% increase in world maize prices month on month. On a more positive note, rice prices are largely unchanged from their February levels and still 10% below their levels a year ago. Now turning to vegetable oils, Prices of vegetable oils in March also made a giant leap up, soaring by 23.2% in just one month. Sunflower seed oil prices increased substantially, fueled by reduced export supplies from the Black Sea region. Palm, soy, and rapeseed oil prices also rose markedly, buoyed by rising global import demand in the wake of the sunflower oil supply disruption. Palm oil prices received additional support from lingering supply tightness in major producing countries, while soy oil prices were underpinned by concerns over reduced export availability in South America. High crude oil values also lend support to international vegetable oil prices. Concerning meat prices, international meat prices also reached an all-time high in March but with a much more modest increase in terms of month to month, rising by 4.8% from February. Pig meat prices registered the steepest monthly increase in the record since 1995, and they're by supply shortfalls of slaughter pigs in Western Europe and a surge in internet demand in light of the upcoming Easter holidays. International poultry meat prices firmed as well, fueled by reduced exportable supplies, further impacted by Ukraine's inability to export poultry meat amid the ongoing conflict. Bovine meat prices also firmed due to supply tightness. For the other commodities, 
dairy and sugar prices have also risen, but much more mod moderately. The dairy price sub-index was up by 2.6%, and that of sugar up 6.7% from February. Increases in crude oil prices raised expectations of a greater use of sugar cane for ethanol production in Brazil, supporting world sugar prices. However, the good harvest, progress, and favorable production prospects in India, a major exporter, contributed to easing the price hike and prevented larger monthly price gains. So even in conclusion, if we look at the price development of those major food commodities in March compared to February, we can say that wheat, vegetable oils, and meat are driving the overall food price inflation, while rice, milk, and sugar are still to some extent more affordable. I should also note that prices increases or the prices have been, have been on an upward trend since June 2020, except for one or two months in which they dropped a little bit, but then the trend has been increasing since June 2020. Just a few key messages to, to conclude the, 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 the intervention, to say that international food commodity prices are soaring due to a combination of factors. These include adverse weather, higher energy prices and transportation costs, higher fertilizer prices, and strong international demand. As I said, these have driven prices already before the, the, the war in Ukraine. Disruption to exports due to the conflict in Ukraine has exacerbated the already difficult situation, putting further upward pressure on prices. Soaring food prices erode food, food affordability and can have serious, serious consequences for food security and nutrition especially in low-income food deficit countries, keeping in mind that countries are still struggling with the impacts of COVID-19. And that's why we, we have some policy recommendation that in order to deal with the situation, for example, the importance of keeping agricultural trade, trade in, in, in food products open and to avoid using restriction to exports in order not to aggravate the situation. And so it is important to have up-to-date information and objective information on market condition, on policy development, in order also to inform decision and to avoid counterproductive decision. Also, it is, of course, important to have uh, social uh, protection programs and safety nets for the most vulnerable people, especially those on the, on the lower income level uh, in terms of, uh, of earnings, given that they spend a large share, as much as 60 to 70 percent of their incomes on, on food. So this is, I will conclude the, here, um, just give some, uh, some uh, introduction for, um, for, for the discussion, and we'll be happy, of course, to answer any questions that, that the audience or the media might have. Thank you. Do we have any questions? Hi there, thank you for doing this briefing. I'm Kristen Salumi from Al Jazeera English. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, based on what you said, obviously prices everywhere have been somewhat impacted, but can you talk about which regions of the world perhaps are most vulnerable, particularly to the conflict situation uh, in Ukraine? and the impacts that that is having on wheat prices and sunflower oil and so on. Thanks. Yes, of course. I think we, we, uh, we, we can, of course, um, uh, have an idea on, on the countries that will be uh, most affected, by, by especially by the conflict in, in Ukraine, uh, keeping in mind that these two countries, um, Ukraine and Russia, for instance, they, uh, they account for 30 percent of global exports of wheat and about 20% of global exports of maize, and then their share for sunflower seed oil is even bigger. It's close to 70% uh, to or, uh, or even over 70%, with Ukraine ranking number one and Russia number two in terms of sunflower seed oil uh, exports. 
So certainly, and uh, also important, a number of countries. In fact, there are what to estimate 50 countries. They depend on food, uh, on wheat imports, specifically for wheat, on wheat imports for about 30 percent of their food, uh, of their wheat imports, they come either from Russia or for, for Ukraine. So certainly, this country will be the most uh, the most affected countries. They are mainly in the Near East and North Africa region. So, for example, if we take the case of Egypt, who is the, the, the leading importer of wheat in the world, about 78%, close to 80% of the country's imports comes from Ukraine and Russia. Uh, Lebanon, about 70%, other countries in the region, Tunisia, about 42%, but also other countries in sub-Saharan Africa and also in South, South Asia, for example, Bangladesh, but also Indonesia imports quite a bit of, of wheat from, from, from the region. So these are the countries, if we go on a regional basis, I would say it's, it's mostly Near East and North Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, and parts of, of South Asia. Thank you very much. I believe we have a question, um, a virtual question from Margaret Bashir. Margaret? Hi, thank you. Thanks for the briefing. I'm Margaret Bashir with Voice of America. Um, could you, uh, do you have data yet uh, from February until now to uh, give us any idea of the impact already of the war in Ukraine on prices? Like what was the difference uh, from December, January, you know, if you, if you have these last few months' data so that we can see the, the real uh, effect. Yes, certainly. I mean, we, we have the monthly data. The food price index is, is a monthly index. So we publish it uh, in the beginning of the first, uh, the first week of uh, the first Friday of, of the month. Uh, so we can, of course, look at the trends and, and the monthly changes from from one month to, to, to the other, that, that data is available. It's available on the FAU website. We'll also be, of course, happy to provide the link for that. In terms of, uh, of uh, how much was due to the war, it's difficult really to, to measure that because, as I said, there are a combination of factors that affect the price movement, both in terms of putting up or the pressure on prices, some other factors. The other way, they, they tend to, 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 to push prices down. However, uh, the, the, the price increases already before before the war in Ukraine in February. As I said, they have been increasing since June 2020. That was that has been an upward trend for the overall commodity prices. Of course, I mean you have to go to commodity by commodity in order to dive in and see the different drivers for the, the, the prices of that specific commodity. However, the trend, the overall the overall trend is due to uh, to uh, of course weather affects uh, affects prices. Um, then we have the, 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 the other important element are energy prices and their impacts on transportation costs, on freight rates. That's also an important element. And we have been seeing, we have seen that the, the energy prices, crude oil prices have been increasing. Uh, fertilizer prices reflecting the cost of production, the same for energy prices. As agriculture, we use a lot of energy in terms of machinery, irrigation system, and so on. So that reflects in the cost of production. High demand, in fact, we have seen even in the in the wake of the COVID-19, I, I think the, 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 the high demand on continue to, to be strong. So it's it's a combination of factors, but it's clear that what happened, I think the sudden the, the sudden shock that was due to, to, to the war in Ukraine has a substantial impact simply because also the, the, the effects of that on, 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 on the in terms of government response. So there was a lot of you know government trying to find of course supplies if you lose the, the source of your wheat which is a basic food commodity for many countries as i said for example in in africa in the near east and in north africa this is really a basic basic food commodity for bread so if you lose your supplier many countries they start rushing to find how to, to replace that and that of course leads to to a soaring price situation a lot of pressure on prices so this is the situation uh, where we are, it has a big impact. Certainly, we don't. We, we, it's difficult to, to measure exactly how much was due to, to the war. Nevertheless, we are certain that the, 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 the impact was substantial, and the, the part that was due to, to, to the war was was substantial. Again, we have the data. It's, it's, it's accessible. It's, it's publicly accessible on our website, and you can see the trends. It's available from 1990 up to March 2022. Thank you. 
Uh, do you have any projections of how much uh, prices may continue to increase by what percentage or um, if the war continues and if the supply chain is uh, still disrupted in, the, in these key commodities and also if prices keep rising? Are there any projections looking into the next few months, for instance? No, no, we don't do that it's simply because it's, a, as you know, it's a very risky business. It's a very difficult really because there are many factors that come into play to, to affect the prices. So usually we only report on, on, on the situation, on, on what's happening, and then we try to, of course, to, uh, to assess uh, in terms of contribution and the, the, the various drivers or factors that have contributed uh, to. So in terms of percentage, it's difficult, but. I think it's clear, and then we have been saying this since February, and, and uh, when the, the war started, and the price have reached a uh, uh, very high level. We are saying, you know, as depends, of course, as as uh, with, with with the war continuing further and escalating, and with the situation, the disruption increasing in terms, of course, in the in the Black Sea region, we can only expect that that prices prices uh, go up. Uh, of course, especially in the in the next probably few months, and then supply response can happen. Different countries they can also come in to supply to supply the market. But we don't think that the deficit that that's being created by by the war and that's being the, this export gap that's being created by the, the reduced export and export availability by Ukraine and and Russia will be easily filled. So that's I, that's we, we we see that the gap will will remain, but probably it gets a little bit smaller so some countries for example we see some countries like india some countries are coming to the, to, to the market to export for instance wheat however we don't think that will cover the, the gap that, that was due to, to, to the war thank you thank you very much um do we have any other questions if there's anybody um, joining us virtually who has any questions please let us know all right going once Okay. All right. Then, Mr. Ben Belhassan, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate your joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good Bye -bye. weekend.